guys for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilman Van Cleek. Counted for. Councilman Secreto. Councilman Kitchen is excused. Councilwoman Hayner. Here. Supervisor Quigley. Here. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Town Hall the Town Board Workshop for Thursday, June 2nd. I see some faces in the audience I usually only see on Facebook watching the meeting. Welcome. Um, Additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, I will open the floor to public discussion on agenda items for anyone who wishes to make comment on matters in, on the agenda. We will have another public comment section at the end of the meeting for any topic anyone wishes to discuss. None, communications. You have a communication that will be included as part of the public hearing though, right? Okay. Um, in the last week, the town of Ulster have, Police Department has received notice of their accreditation from New York State. I would like to call Cheryl Benjamin and Mr. Short forward. This is the plaque that will be proudly displayed in the town of Ulster Police Department coming here shortly. And these are two of the individuals who prepared the materials and made the presentations that led to our accreditation. And I wanted to thank you. Anyway, you want to say anything? No, it was a pleasure being part of the process. I'm very happy that the chief uh, chose us to be part of the process. I think that uh, this is departmentally accredited. Um, something that has to be done every five years. There's 110 standards that have to be met over a five year period, 20 of which are critical. And it's a very long and arduous process to keep up with that, but it's well worth it because uh, it holds our police department in the town to the highest standard possible. So. Are you after that? No, we said it all. <laughs> <laughs> This back in a nice secure container, and you Very guys nice. can hang it up when you get to it. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Mr. Majori, department head report for the sewer department. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor and town board and members of the public. Uh, a real quick uh, department head report. Uh, Ulster sewer, uh, all the staff is healthy. Um, we're working on a bunch of different projects, uh, some of which is we've applied for DEC funding for an asset management program. Uh, we're working on energy grants to accomplish projects that we've uh, had called out on a 2019 study. Um, that involves our, our UV system and, and digester systems uh, upgrades that will save us a lot of time and energy and manpower. Um, other than that, everything at Ulster is working well. Uh, Whittier is performing well with no problems to report. Washington Ave is working well, and it's it's handling the increased flow from the new car wash in town, and that's working well and keeping the lines flowing nicely. Uh, Spring Lake, we're working on uh, grant submittals for phase two 
which we're uh, is coming up in the next month or so. And overall, we're watching the costs of operation continue, continue to increase between the fuel, all of our supplies, all of our equipment. It's, it's just getting more and more expensive to, to operate the plant. But that's it. Does anybody have any questions? With the enhancements you're making to the plant, will there be any reduction in the amount of chemicals or fuels that we'll need? Um, with some of these upgrades, like the digester gas system, we will drastically reduce the amount of, uh, currently we're run, burning propane for heat, but we'll burn all biogas to, to provide our heating for our diet. comes from the sewer. From, from the process, yes. Okay. So it's created in the plant and that will produce the heat energy for the digester and the building heat. For the for the whole plant, so, so reduce your cost of heat. Yeah, so we'll pretty much be self sufficient, and we'll eliminate buying LP gas or natural gas if we ever hook to that. Um, the UV system that will also save us energy. That has new technology that's um, on VFD controls, so it throttles the power and the output of those bulbs um, based on the flow, so it can it can throttle back and save energy where our current system just runs full steam the whole time and you know doesn't have that ability All okay right. thank you thanks uh, moving on to new business uh tonight you are being presented with the monthly supervisor's report for the months of October through December, 2021. Those reports will be posted to the town's website upon acceptance. Uh, they reflect the pre-audit results of the revenues versus expenses for the operating year 2021. And um, I'm asking for a motion to accept the supervisor's report as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Out of the process of closing the books for the end of the year, we've identified those accounts that are going to formally require either a budget modification or a transfer within a set of accounts within the specific fund so that the expenditures do not exceed the town board approved budget. In your package is the listing of the budget modifications for the funds requiring budget mods and transfers. I would request a uh, motion to accept them as presented. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The next item is presentation only. No action is required by this board. It is basically a draft fund balance report for the year ending December 2021. Based upon the financial results included in the monthly supervisor's report previously presented. Uh, this is subject to the receipt of the final AUD and audited financial statements which are in process by the independence public accountants. And we will be asking, I will be asking for a review uh, and approval once we finish the audit. So there's nothing there to do. In addition, it has been normal for the town supervisor to submit to the town board, the operating statements that will be presented and filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission in support of our public filing disclosure requirements for our publicly traded bonds that are outstanding. There is no action that is required to be taken on this matter. And the final statement, once it is completed, will be presented to the board at, at the earliest opportunity. It has been uh, customary in the last several years that we run in July with only one meeting. And I believe at the organizational meeting, we scheduled a workshop meeting for July 7th. 
in reviewing the calendar and seeing where July 7th falls in relation to the 4th of July holiday and the potential for people being on vacation that week and absent. Uh, I'm asking for a discussion on uh, removing the town board workshop meeting scheduled from July 7th, 2022 from the schedule and canceling the meeting. I'll make a motion. To cancel? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We've done it every year, which vacation is the problem. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item on our agenda is a discussion on a replacement vehicle for the building department. And this is coming to us outside the ordinary because of the problems ordering vehicles and obtaining commitments for future delivery. Last year, we ordered two police cars that were scheduled for production and then canceled. And we've ended up in the last three months purchasing two vehicles that were available from Mr. Begnell's inventory because we had cars go out of service for whatever reason. Um, in a conversation last night, Mr. Begnell indicated that he was still unable to make any commitments on future deliveries because he is unable to get commitments from the manufacturers for delivery. And Mr. Berardi's conversations, and I believe Mr. Petromol would echo the same, that in talking to the two Ford dealers that we usually do business with, they're not even taking orders. Is that correct? So Mr. Tutt has come to the supervisor's office and given the potential for a staff adjustment in the building department, that would require a new vehicle or a vehicle to be used for the new staff. So tonight in our package is a presentation from LT Bangle Motors for a 1500 SSV crew cab four by four. The list price is $46,680 for which Bangle Motors will sell to the town at $39,099. Um, I would like a motion to proceed with this acquisition and then we can have a discussion. Okay, any discussion amongst the town board members on this purchase? I think it's great that we're able to uh, have a local businessman who's able to get us a deal. I'm just looking at it on my computer here. Um, and I know from my business experience, getting stuff right now is pretty difficult. So I would, it looks to me like a good deal. And I, I think it would be well advised for us to move ahead with that. I think the problem that we've had in the past is that we take some past police cars that were running out of mileage. As you know, the police run up to 100,000 miles and they get new cars. We ship them to another department and we nickel and dime ourselves with these cars. So getting the new vehicle, I think in the long run, uh, Warren, the third department's not gonna put a, a lot of miles on the vehicle, which we should have this vehicle for a long time. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You know what you gotta do. The next item on our agenda under old business re relates to the fourth amendment to the solid waste management agreement between the Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency and the town of Ulster that was presented to the town board last week. It's a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign the fourth amendment. The agreement essentially memorializes a 20 year obligation on the part of the Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency to continue paying post community benefit fees to the town of Ulster for the facility that they maintain down on Flatbush Road. Town has been successful in negotiating an adjustment to the pilot agreement, doubling from $4,000 to $8,000 the annual payment, which has been in effect 
since 1996, the $8,000 payment will escalate at a scheduled 2% per year for the 20 year term. In addition, the CPI escalator clause will be reset to the current CPI value. The tonnage would be calculated. And for the first two years, the RRA would be given a 15% discount on the calculated amount to give them an opportunity to work it into their future budgets. And then at and the third year, it will go to a full rate. This is a 20 year deal and it is highly beneficial to the town. So with that explanation, may I have a motion to accept the resolution as presented? Any discussion on the matter? Yes, I do. Um, I, I know that the relationship between the UCRA and the town at different times has been uh, difficult, but I wanna commend the supervisor and the Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency for uh, both of them leading this to a, I think a super beneficial uh, agreement for both parties. And uh, I personally appreciate the UCRA's openness to inviting us over to see the operation. And uh, it will never be perfect, but at least they're trying their best, it appears, to, to operate in a reasonable, good neighborly fashion. So I appreciate the, the situation. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And the final uh, op item before we go to our public hearing on our agenda, Mr. Secreto, uh, as chairman of the Recreation Committee, the summer camp discussion. Uh, summer camp. Uh, our last meeting, I talked about we had 30 kids that were signed up. We still have 30 kids signed up. Um, the only thing I could think of is going on, one parent isn't working and the kids are staying home with the other parent. COVID is involved. I mean, we had camps where we had 280 kids at it, 300 kids. But as part of the rec committee, I made a suggestion and uh, with the backing of the board, they're gonna leave it up to the rec committee. Um, we will have camp for those 30 kids and we'll still take signups till uh, the 10th of this month. Um, so with that being said, we will have camp. Can okay, we have a motion to authorize to proceed with the summer camp under the scenarios that Councilman Secreto has described? I'll make a motion. Any discussion further? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Jim's going to go down and help with that. With that being said, it is past 7.10, the appointed time for our local law public hearing for a local law prohibiting smoking on town-owned property entitled No Smoking on Town-Owned Property. With that, I ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Do I have a second? All those in favor, aye. Please come forward to the uh, podium and make your comments on the proposed law and state your name for the record. We have a written comment that I will ask to be read into the record, unless you wanna come. The writer is here, right? The writer will have the opportunity to select how he wants to present it. Let him read. I'm not reading. Now the pressure's on. How, come on, go fast. Like I want to read your This is a an email correspondence received from Regis Obajiski, received Wednesday, May 18th. Two, uh, it also is from Vicki Lucarini, both 170 Ledge Road, Town of Ulster. To the members of the members of the board of the Town of Ulster. We support your proposal to ban the smoking of any and all plant-based products such as tobacco and marijuana and vaping derivatives of these and other chemical products on all Town of Ulster properties. One of us, Vicki, was a public health nurse who led the implementation of the Clean Indoor Act in Dutchess County. We believe that the Town of Ulster is within its rights to control the primary use and secondary effects of smoking and vaping on town properties. We also recommend adding a related littering enforcement component that considers discarding wastes from these activities, such as cigarette butts, vaping vials, wrappings, et cetera, as an additional violation. 
Thank you for initiating this action for the health and well-being of Old Town residents, especially its most vulnerable citizens, namely children, people with disabilities, and seniors. Any other additional comments from members of the audience here tonight? Uh, Ms. Hartman? Laura Hartman, 44 Catskill Avenue. Um, I just would like to say my support for, for this law. Um, we're all vulnerable to secondhand smoke, uh, any kind of it. Um, and I just think our public places should be safe from that. Our parks should be clean. Um, so I just am here to say I support the, the new law. Thank, Thank you. you. Any additional comments? May I have a motion to close the public hearing? All those in favor? Written comment will be accepted for up to 30 days from tonight's meeting. The town board will then vote on the law. And I will support the changes that Mr. Obajeski suggests on the littering, but I would ask that we do it in a stepped fashion where we immediately implement the no smoking law and then proceed to modify it to add the additional requirements so we don't hold it up and we get it in place immediately. And I asked Mr. Kovacs to take and look and review the law as it is currently presented to try to come together with uh, some language that we can present at a next meeting so we can kick off the modification process as quickly as possible. And I might also say, can we include an authorization for posting restrictive signs if it is not already in the legislation at various town locations? At the, at the board meeting we have, and we're gonna vote on it, can we get some input from the police department and anyone else who would be involved with having to enforce this rule? On he skipped out tonight because he knew you were gonna yeah, ask that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but department heads are going to have to enforce it with their staff. Uh, I can see it happening here at this building. We don't always have officers upstairs, only when there's court. So there's going to be posting and friendly warning. But I think we also want, I think it was brought up, you brought up the point that we don't want to, like at our parks, end up requiring a park attendant to have to actually enforce it. So but the need, like they do, if there's a problem, they call the police department and the police department comes. But there's gonna to have to be a sensitivity and an understanding of how we will implement this and how we will enforce it. And let's not make a rule that's not gonna be enforced. That would be ridiculous. If we go to all this effort and then we don't know how we're gonna make it work. You know? Okay. It makes us look like fools then, which I think the best of intentions are here. So I'd like to know how we're gonna so we can be supportive and we can know what the steps are. Because we get a call, you know, I'm down at the park and somebody's smoking. What are we supposed to do? Yeah. That could happen. Have you ever got a call from somebody at the park? I frequently get yeah. calls from constituents yeah. about problems. So it's gonna be it. it's gonna be the parks that are gonna be the problem. I mean, around here, people are grown adults, you know. Yeah. The, the law is you don't smoke, the law is no smoking. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. You hate to have your name come out at town hall. You know? Right. All right. Just be prepared. I just want to make sure we just discuss what we're going to expect our department heads to do and, and what, what we're going to, how we're going to go back. That's all. That'd be Anna, any better. comment? Yeah, I just think adults are just as market case. So it's not hard. We kind of make sure that everyone's not that way. We're trying to do the right thing. Right. Yeah. Let's okay. Just do it. Very good. Anything else on the board? With that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to open the floor to general comment on any matter that any uh, attendee tonight here wishes to have a discussion on. Mr. Casey. Mr. Quigley, town board. Uh, it seems to be a problem down to the boat ramp. I myself own four vessels. I'm being told I have to pay $75 per vessel to put it in the water. 
The other day, Monday, friends of mine were going down. They said, no, we can't go down. The park attendant wants $75 per jet ski because there's two jet skis on the trailer. He wants $75. Then they had a DEC police woman down there. She's saying, nope, it's a vessel. You have to pay $75 per vessel. They left. One of the people down there was only going to put in one jet ski. He was prepared to pay the $75 per trailer, not for each vessel that's going in the water. The town had this problem in the administration before you. They tried the same thing. They wanted to charge per jet ski that was going in. Then they said, no, you just get a season pass for the trailer and you're fine. I went down, I paid my 75. But I told the park attendant, my 75 is going to include my two jet skis, my super boat and my fishing boat. No, it's not. You're going to be paying 75 for each one when you go down. It's not happening. I'm not doing it. I'm a town resident. I pay the boat fee. I understand it to use the dock. $75 is a lot of money. That's one trailer. I'm not bringing them all down at one time. You follow what I'm saying? And uh, I said, I already spoke to Mr. Quigley. He says, well, I don't answer Mr. Quigley. I answer Mr. Secreto. Well, he's a town councilman. I'll grant you that but you do run the town. The other day, I know of two people, I was $150, they didn't pay because they left, because they won 300 to put in two jet skis, and excuse me, put in four jet skis. Of the four, only three of them were going in the water, because one of the gentlemen's wives were taking out my skate. So there would have been one still sitting in the parking lot. We're talking a double jet ski trailer. And they wanted $75 per skate. This happened back in the early 2000s and it was taken care of. Now all of a sudden we're starting to do it again. And it's crazy. And as far as the DEC woman at the boat ramp, she has every right to be there. She shouldn't be there discussing the pork bees to use a boat ramp. Maybe she should be riding around stopping the people who are smoking dope Looks like you've seen out Chi Chi Chung half the time, you know, bellowing out the windows with kids and everything in the cars. Not sitting at the boat ramp telling the park attendant what to charge people. I just, wish this town board would look into it and get it corrected. Let me just ask, Mr. S we had, we did not have a, we had an attendant last year, yeah. Meisenhelder. He continued the policies that were previously in effect of $75 a trailer. We have a new individual this year. Okay. The sticker doesn't go on the boat. Okay. Okay. Here's the issue. We've had a change in policy that the board did not vote on. What's on the field? It's not on the town website. Unless I missed it. I didn't see any on there. Don't get me wrong, Rocky. I'm not complaining about the $75 fee. Great. I'm all for it. But um, it's a little absurd. I myself have, you know, four vote boats. I'm not taking them all down at once. I take one down here or there. The local boat marina, how's he paying? I'll discuss it with the fellow that's working down there. He's new. Oh, yeah. No, no. I But it's... The guy, you know, we use a little common sense. I, I don't recall we putting that in the fee schedule because there was a separate fee schedule that we had to send to. The it DC. used to be fifty dollars, as far as I ever remember <laughs> paying. It. Actually, seven. Dick, was it? It was fifty dollars. Yes, you're right. It was fifty dollars, but we got and it's been fifty dollars since 1996. Yeah, we got permission from the DEC to raise it to seventy five, and the eight dollars per day went to ten dollars per day. Yeah. Fine, was, I get that. Uh, uh, that's not an issue. When I was the harbor master down there, if you came in with, with uh, 
Skidoo, boat, whatever I had. If you had a school with freight, it, like, it, it was a tag on there, and it wasn't for. And I've never put my tag, and I and the tag I got the other day is still not on my trailer or boat. It stays over my sun so, visor so in I case I'm questioning. Here I go. There it is. Per trailer. Well, I'll talk to him and make sure it's per trailer. Right. Mr. Casey, it, the town it holster fee schedule says per trailer. Per trailer. Well, he's. I didn't see okay. it even. Where was it on the website? It's in, Under public information. There's a fee All schedule. Right. All okay. Right. But the point is, all well, fair. You were appropriate in calling it to our attention. It appears to be a mistake on our part in the in the new employee, and we'll address it. Right. You know, and and it's. So it doesn't matter if I take down any of my trailers, as long as I only bring down one. As long as the trailer with the sticker on it. No, 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 the sticker, that's the problem, Rocky. My, I have four boats. Have, Am I going to have to go get four? You see what I'm saying? My, my sticker is 33, I think, is what it is. It, I keep it over my sun visor. Here I go, I got my boat. Here I go, I got this jet ski trailer, or I'll take this jet ski. See, we I, never, over the last 13 years, that I've been and here. I know other people have the same problem. They come in with a boat or they have their skis. You see what I'm well, getting? That's at? something that we're going to have to change on the schedule. The fee schedule. We look so. at we look at the fact that if an individual comes down there, and he has a trailer with two pieces on it, he may not. He may have the jet ski trailer this week and then the boat next week, but he can only use and be in the water on whatever equipment he's brought down at the time. Man, and that's the way it's been treated. Right. That or have the attendant you know all right how what are you bringing down i'm bringing down maybe my fishing boat maybe whatever two skis write it on the sticker well, that he knows that's what i'm or write discuss. it on a receipt or something like that and our stickers come with numbers on them right right there's 30 through so whatever we should figure out if we can get stickers like he's got four four different things where he can get the same number well i got four i'm using sticker you know what I mean? If we could uh, somehow write that in without it washing off or something. You would, just write it on the back of the sticker and let them put it. Here's um, your sticker. Put it over your. Why don't, why don't the sticker go on the truck? Like, uh, like that truck that they carry one trailer. Yeah, but they have well, I, every once in a while, I see. I, I know what you're saying. I understand. But me, I know. But I, I bounce around. Basically, the sticker, is, the sticker is a card. You're using the sticker as a card. Exactly. And you have a pass for one vehicle. Exactly. The trailer to the boat dock. So that's that's what we'll do. We'll figure it out where you have one pass. So yeah, fine. My suggestion just have them write it on the back of the if it's if yeah. you're using it as multiple, not putting on the trailer, write it on the back. This way he knows all right, there's gonna be two jet ski trailers or two boat trail, whatever. So that, what you wrote what is written on the, the sticker is what goes. Yeah, well, somebody changes it during the year, and then they come tell you. Yes, yeah. we'll but, work it out administratively. But thank you for bringing thank it. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to him down there. So, we're not going to arrest you. anybody anymore? No, okay. He, Mr. Metzger, he's a good egg, that guy. Though. He's trying. Do you charge? While we're talking about this, do you charge for kayaks, canoes, and sailboats without motors? Well, the kayaks were brought in on the back, on the top of the car, right? Well, depends on how many they're coming in. And I'll tell you, in the past, they were oh, any one that was uh, manually powered was free. Okay. Now it's not written that way, but I, I somehow. Okay. So any any manual vessel, any right. non motor powered vessel, non motor motorized vessel was free. was free. And I'll ask, I mean, if you came down and you had a a paddle uh, surfboard or whatever, they got in free. Okay, so we'll check that out. I'll sit down with Susan. Okay, but uh, what are the hours of that attendant? Four hours. Four hours? Yep. If it's slow after the four hours, he can stay later, but if it's slow, he goes home. Send him home. What time does it come in? 
Mr. Metzger, it's only his second week at work. He still hasn't well, he figured got everything out. He should have been trained. He's fine. It's not you. That's right. And if it wasn't for the damn governor that said you had to get rid of people over 70 years of age. We didn't get rid of you because of that. I'm not going to make this a, an argument before the board. Right? Well, he's a good worker. Any other comments from members of the audience tonight on any topic? May I have a motion to adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for coming out tonight. We will see you at the town board meeting in two weeks.